Hey, what is up you guys, Vin Tran here. And for the past five years, I've been doing wedding films. And along with that comes tons of things that I've learned in the field. And most of that definitely would have been awesome to know when I was starting out. So I wanna share with you my top five things that I think any beginner should know when starting wedding films. And a little disclaimer that these are not in any particular order. All right, let's go. And number one is I wish someone would have told me how important it is to capture clean audio. When I was starting out, all I used was a Rode VideoMic Pro on top of my camera to capture all of the audio. And of course, it did well in certain situations and horrible in others. If I had to go back in time, I would tell myself to just invest in lav mics and something that I can patch into the DJ's board. I use and recommend the Tascam DR10L lav mics and the DR40 field recorder, which is also from Tascam. And you're listening to it right now. I set the lav mics to dual record mode, which will record one track normally and one at a negative 12 dB. And this has been a lifesaver sometimes. And the second thing is to shoot lots. And by this, I don't mean to shoot every second of the day, but to get variations of what I do shoot. An example would be for a venue. Get a wide static shot, a wide glide cam push-in shot, maybe a tight on the details, a medium shot of the archway, of the chairs, what are flowers there may be. Because when I first started shooting, I would just get one wide shot of everything and then call it a day. And then when I got into the editing room, if I realized that the movement was shaky or was out of focus, then I couldn't even use that whole shot. And then I'd be out of an establishing shot, for example. So get variations and get multiple takes. The third thing is to tailor your films to the couple. This is an obvious one now, but looking back, all of my films looked very similar for every couple. I got the same shots, followed the same storytelling arc, and would use very similar songs. And to a point, this may be considered your style, but I think it's good to also vary your films just a little so that they're not all the same. A good example of this may be a couple that wants a slower song or an instrumental song. Another example of this could be that couple number one wants to focus on traditions, such as the bride wearing the mother's dress or the groom wearing his dad's watch. And then couple number two may want to focus on how they're still having a wedding regardless of what's going on in the world. And going along with point number three, point number four is color. I cannot believe it took me so long to take color correcting and color grading seriously. It's imperative to keep your colors consistent throughout the whole film. As you can see in my first film, some of the shots during the day were super warm and then at the reception the bride's dress was super cool. All of that should have been corrected so that all the colors look the same during the whole film. And I think part of that is because as a beginner we're overwhelmed on a wedding day so we forget to do simple things such as changing your color temperature. Even going from one room to another could be a whole different color temperature. A tip I personally like to do is to ask them to turn off lamps and the overhead lights and then only use window lights. That way I know it's around 55 to 5600 Kelvin and that I can dial that into my camera. And it also just adds a cool moody look to the whole film, which I like doing. And then at the very end, I turn them all back on for them. And lastly, it's super easy to work with a photographer. In all honesty, I've worked really well with photographers during all of my wedding days. I've worked with many different people and companies, but regardless of their personalities, as long as you both communicate and set expectations, it's rare that you'll ever have an issue. The first thing I do when arriving is to greet the bride and the groom and other vendors such as hair and makeup and or a coordinator. And then I try to go find the photographer and introduce myself and anybody else on my team for that day. And I explain that I wanna work together and if I'm in their way, just to let me know. And generally, I get the same response back. So yeah, I hope these tips help you. Of course, for veterans, these are common sense things, but for any beginner out there, for real, this is an amazing industry you're joining and I really recommend joining Facebook groups and really engaging yourself in the community there are so many good people in this industry that you can look up to I'll link some of my favorite Facebook groups down below but that's all I have for you today as always if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and I'll catch you guys next time